If you are watching this and you pack suitcases for a living, please get in touch. This week's new enemy is packing. Summer is the time when I do most of my work abroad, so from July to September I'm either packing, unpacking, repacking or living out of a suitcase. Packing should look like this. Instead, when I do it, it looks like this. The main problem with my method of packing, which we shall call the grab any clothes you can find and stick them in the suitcase method, is that I never know what clothes I have with me. If I'm going on a seven day trip, it's not unheard of for me to bring 15 pairs of pants and about four pairs of socks. I should point out at this stage that when this situation arises, I go and buy more socks, I don't just wear dirty ones. Hygiene first, kids. The other mistake I quite often make is packing inappropriate clothing. If I'm heading to the Bahamas, I'll probably pack a parka. Going to the North Pole, I'll bring some speedos. This is why I need someone to pack for me, but that isn't actually a job. And I want to know, why is nobody offering that service? What job does not exist, but you feel should? As always, put your answers in the syllabub. A few of you have been asking if I will be attending Summer in the City this year, and unfortunately the answer is no. I'm really gutted I can't go to this year's Summer in the City because I owe you guys a lot. This channel has grown much faster than I could have ever dreamed of, and that's because of how fantastic you guys have been at sharing and commenting and telling other people about that channel. So I owe you a massive thank you for that. So if there are any other upcoming YouTube events that you would like me to attend, please let me know what they are and I will do my best to be there. It would be great to meet you and say thank you. Now I'm not really one for celebrity gossip, but I have to say I am devastated to discover that two of the biggest stars on the planet are splitting up after being engaged for many, many years. I'm of course talking about Kermit the Frog and Miss Piggy, and no I'm not making this up, they genuinely have split up, and I'll put an article in the box below to prove to you that this is a genuine news story. I mean, what happens now? Do they start dating other Muppets? Because that's going to get awkward. Is Miss Piggy going to keep dating frogs? Is she going to date Crazy Frog? Because that would be terrible. Is she going to start dating other pigs? Is she going to start going out with Babe? I mean, where does the madness end? Who do you think Miss Piggy and Kermit the Frog should start dating now? Or do you think they should just get back together? As always, put your answers in the syllabub. If you watch this channel from day one, you'll know I'm quite proud of my Kermit impression. Uh, welcome to the uh, Muppet Show. I mean, that's pretty good, right? Hiya, frog! Okay, my Miss Piggy needs work. This week I am taking a leap into uncharted territory and I'm going to recommend a film. This week's film recommendation is Inside Out by Pixar. I felt compelled to recommend this film to you after I watched it last night. I don't want to say too much about it in case I spoil it. All I will say is Pixar have once again created an utterly astounding film with a highly imaginative concept. Even though the film is a fictional representation of the way our emotions and memories work, I think it genuinely tells us a lot about the way that we think and feel. No memory is ever confined to one emotion and the way they deal with that, especially sadness, is just utterly groundbreaking. It's just an incredible film. It's a film definitely best seen in the cinema, so please check it out before it leaves cinemas and do not forget to bring tissues. For those of you who've seen Pixar movies in the past, you will know that they have a little five minute short film before they show the main feature. And this film is no different. It has one of those shorts and this one is particularly beautiful. So again, worth seeing. Because I've recommended a film this week, I'm not gonna recommend a book to you. <coughs> yeah, right. This week's book recommendation is The Slap by Christos Schalkers. The book is set in Melbourne, Australia and tracks the repercussions that take place after a man slaps a three-year-old child at a barbecue for misbehaving. The repercussions of this event are far-reaching and involve a whole load of different characters in ways that are pretty unexpected. There's a lot of really interesting twists and turns. It's quite a long book, but ultimately very rewarding. I read this book a few years ago, and if I remember correctly, there's quite a bit of naughty language in it. So if you are a younger cheap opera, wait a few years before you give this one a go. That's almost everything for this week. Thank you as always for tuning in. This week in the syllabub, I want to know what jobs don't exist, but you feel should. Which meetups are coming up that you would like me to attend? Should Kermit and Miss Piggy get back together? And of course, keep your silly questions and book recommendations coming in. As always, stick your comments, ramblings and musings in the syllabub. This week's silly question came from the Piano Hat Girl and she asked, if you were Jean Valjean and all the barricade boys were nearly dead, would you save Marius or would you save another one? I would save somebody else, just because I think it would be fun to watch this exchange on stage. Father, I am 
I'm so delighted that you have returned from the barricade. Have you brought home my beloved Marius to me? Did you just say Marius? Oh no! I thought your beloved was called Angeras. I have brought the wrong man home to you from the barricade. Oh no! Next week, I'm hoping to have got a tan from some of these trips abroad. I won't hold my breath. I thought I would give you a short montage of me being silly on the Silly Isles.